Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Eagles Film Room here on Philly Sports Network with myself, Liam Jenkins. In the fourth round of this year's NFL Draft, the Eagles selected defensive end Josh Sweat, who stands at 6 foot 5, 251 pounds. Now while a severe high school injury may have hampered his stock, it did not stop the Seminole from flourishing as a former 5 star top 10 overall recruit. But the question is why did he fall to the Eagles in round 4 and what does his NFL ceiling hold? It's time to take a look at the eye in the sky and find out exactly what the birds are getting for their buck in this episode of Eagles Film Room. There is no denying Sweat's physical skill set. He's a dominant athlete who was a complete mismatch for offensive linemen in his conference, but to me, he was very much a lightning or thunder defensive end, meaning we either get all the razzle and the dazzle without the execution, like we see on this play here, just a bit too patient on bringing down the quarterback, or we see the thunder without much in the way of a flash like on this play against Alabama, where he just shrugs off a much bigger offensive lineman, throws that rangy arm up and forces the incompletion, but he didn't quite get the sack, which obviously would have been the next advancement. This does lend itself to run defense, and on what looks like a typical screen incompletion, notice how Sweat gets off the line almost instantly, and he's almost a second in front of the other defensive lineman, pushing the other offensive lineman into the vision of the quarterback just enough to close that window and force the incompletion. And here's very much the same. We see all the right things, he uses his arms to get off that block, but he just trips at that last second, bringing the pressure, but not quite the sack. But what happens when thunder and lightning come together? The answer is very simple. It's a monstrous play. And this is what the Eagles will try and nurture from Josh Sweat. And he'll be in good company, learning from the likes of Brandon Graham and Chris Long. Take a look here. He's going to be lined up just inside the shade of that right tackle. He's lining up against the offensive guard. His arm is wrapped around him, but he just throws it down and leaps into Jalen Hurts for a sack. Now, what we do see here, though, is he lines up in a four-point stance. Now what this means is that most pass rushers line up in a three point, making it quite easy to get off and really throw that momentum of the outside arm. He doesn't have that at Florida State, and instead he's having to work from the ground up, but this doesn't stop him from delivering that impactful hit on the quarterback, throwing him down to the ground. The potential is there, but when you're working out of a four point stance to get that weight back up to a level base and then work out a pass rushing move, perhaps a counter as well, is difficult to do. So in a limited capacity as a run defender, Sweat did a brilliant job of, look at that, maintaining, sustaining, visioning the ball and forcing the incompletion. And this play against Duke was very much a Derek Barnett look. Bending and bending and bending around that offensive tackle and just leaping into the ankles of the Duke quarterback. That is a pass rushing play. You cannot teach instinct, but what you can nurture is technique. And that is something the Eagles will want from Sweat at the next level. And there we see again, does all the right things to get to the backfield, doesn't quite deliver. Same thing there, penetration through what is a very difficult, almost two-man matchup. Swims over the top, the offensive lineman's on the ground, doesn't quite do enough, however, to bring him down. But it's as a run defender where Sweat came alive in the lights as a Seminole, and the reason for that is you don't need those flashy counter moves or the ways to get past an offensive lineman. In his case, you just need that raw power to throw him back into the lane and clog the line. And this may be my perfect example of that. On the surface, it's a completed pass. But what if the ball was handed off to the running back on the RPO? Well, Sweat would have been directly in his path for a tackle for a loss because he's able to maul his way into the backfield. And we see this again later in that same game against NC State throws the tackle into the running back to bring him down. He doesn't need the flash and the lights and the bling. He just needs that raw thundering power and that is what makes him so dangerous. Counterweight to this of course is that as a pass rusher without that flurry of moves you can be fairly limited. That yellow circle is where the quarterback will either hand the ball off on the play action or begin his bootleg. Now watch where Josh Sweat ends up in comparison to around the 12 yard line here. The offensive lineman jumps out, picks him up, and at that point there's around a 3 or 4 yard deficit between Sweat and the quarterback. Now I know it's a play action, but even so, that's a distance too great. 
And the offensive lineman here on the closest to your screen is mauling Sweat to the ground. He can't spin out of it. He can't get his arms from underneath the chest of the big bruiser. And as a result, he's thrown to the ground. And on this one, he just simply pulls up. He breaks through, penetrates the line, and almost has to hesitate before he starts pursuing the quarterback. And when falling to his knees on plays like that one there, there's only so much you can ask of him. He's not a natural pass rusher, partly because of that four-point stance, partly because he just hasn't been taught that area of the game anywhere near as prominently which means in his first few years in Philadelphia, he may be marginalised. But it's not hard to see why the Eagles took a fire on him in the fourth round. The ceiling is sky high if they can mould those pass rushing traits. All he needs is a counter move and to be lined up in a three point stance outside. And that slow get off concern, that ability to get stuck under the arms of an offensive lineman, they're very, very minimal because he's going to have all the weapons in his arsenal to counter those and really get a strong pass rush growing. If he can establish that in his first year as an eagle, then this is going to be a pass rush that will be tenacious for years to come. He's built like a defensive tackle. He can play inside the shoulder of the left tackle like he did at Florida State. And with that in mind, he's very, very similar to Michael Bennett. He can play inside, he can play outside. And with Bennett's uncertain future, it's not really difficult to see why the Eagles sought a long-term replacement. Someone to maybe learn under the veteran pro bowler should he return to the game of football and pick up everything he knows, every nuance about the position. This is a dominant athlete who still needs a lot of coaching and a lot of moulding, but the ceiling is sky high. If you like this video, guys, please leave a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We want to hit 2,000 subscribers by the time the regular season rolls around, and this community is growing every single day. Let us know what player you want to see evaluated next in the comments. Leave that like, as I said, and don't forget, phillysportsnetwork.com is the place to go for daily Eagles content.